started in just under three minutes as you can see um, we'll be getting started with uh, the commencement event uh, for the uh, WHO uh, scholar level one course on communicating radiation risk in pediatric imaging um, participants have, uh, from all over the world have been working together for work together for six weeks and um, today is the day when we will be presenting um, certificates uh, of participation of uh, uh, recognizing uh, the uh, effort um, participants have put in and you'll be hearing firsthand from both the subject matter experts uh, who uh, supported uh, learners in the course as well as from learners themselves about their experience but the most interesting uh, part of this uh, may well be that participants will also be invited to present um, their action plans over what they are going to do and how they are going to go about it uh, to um, make a difference, uh, change things with respect to this uh, issue of radiation com uh, communication in the pediatric uh, context. So uh, stay tuned. It's in just under two minutes. Uh, um, I just want to greet uh, Dr. Farhan Ali from uh, Djibouti, who's uh, joined us via LinkedIn. And do let us know you're here. Um, we won't be able to acknowledge everyone, but I will try to... Uh, uh, to do so and of course we have with us in the room uh, the course participants uh, who this is really their uh, day to day to honor and uh, recognize the work and the level of effort uh, that they've put into the course. Uh, see you soon. <laughs>
welcome to you from Geneva, Switzerland. I'm Rida Satki from the Geneva Learning Foundation. And here today, we're here for a very special occasion, uh, what we call the commencement event. So participants in the uh, WHO Scholar Level 1 course on radiation risk communication work together for six intensive weeks. And this is the day when they will set off on the journey with what they learned to apply what they learned. Uh, of course, with me are the subject matter experts. I'm going to ask them to uh, briefly introduce themselves and just share one reflection um, about the uh, uh, from their experience of the course. What are they going to keep uh, from this one? Of course, they have been very involved uh, throughout their uh, their careers in teaching and learning, in training. Uh, would love to hear from each of you to kick off this commencement event and welcome uh, and greetings to all three of you. We will start, of course, with uh, Dr. Maria del Rosario Perez. Well, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, perhaps, to everybody. Thank you very much for this opportunity to be again with all of you. Um, and uh, if I have to say something from what, what I learned from this experience is that we really learn from each other much more than whatever we can learn from books, from uh, formal trainings. And uh, it has been for me really a learning experience because I could see that all of you with different times, in different ways, with different perspectives and coming from different settings, and cultures, etc., all have grown in a way uh, that uh, I I have been really, really surprised, but very, uh, very happily surprised. And uh, this is what I can say for now, Reda, that it has been really a learning experience for all of us. Wonder wonderful. Thank you, uh, Maria. Uh, let's go now to Dr. Don Frush. Uh, Don would love to hear uh, some initial thoughts um, about the the yeah your experience of this course. Uh, great, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, just a few words. I uh, continue to be so incredibly impressed by all of your commitments to first of all your profession, and second of all to kids. Um, uh, it is. Um, uh, a, a tremendously important population that we all deal with and uh, your uh, resolute um, uh, commitment to this population in terms of um, helping them and their parents understand how you deliver great care uh, is incredible. And, and I'll just say I've come away from this um, uh, better understanding and really humbled by what you all do. Um, so I have nothing but thanks to give uh, to you. I look forward to uh, hearing the um, uh, project conclusions here. Look forward to acknowledging your successes in what's been done and hope we can continue as a global community to work together uh, to make uh, the care of your patients, your, your kids, and the parents that are taking care of them better. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Uh, now to Dr. Joanna Kastner-Brown. Uh, of course, here you're hearing initial thoughts from th the three subject matter experts who are really guides on the side for the participants throughout this uh, course. Joanna? Um, hello, everyone. And I just would like to say thank you so much to everyone for joining the course because it was a uh, really great pleasure and fantastic experience to work with you. And I just feel that we created this group like a family and for all of the professionals across the world, across the world that we all care of children, of our patients and their families. And it's really, really good to know that it's like a network of the people who have exactly the same goal in mind and people who care. And I really hope that this course is like a beginning of uh, our journey and working together and just improving uh, what we can do with our patients. Uh, it's also um, incredibly nice to know that we all work towards the same goal. And it was very, very impressive for me 
to look at the work that you are all doing. Because in every center, each of us has the different difficulties, but we are all are working to make it better. And the best thing is that we are all learning together. So great to be part of the group. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you um, to all three of, uh, of you, really, uh, guides on the side throughout the course. Now, in fact, um, we want to uh, go back in time and review and perhaps explain for those who were not part of the process uh, for this uh, first cohort. And uh, this is where I want to go to, to tell the story of the course. So uh, Min Jia, who facilitated uh, for the uh, foundation this, uh, this course, um, put together this set of slides uh, to really tell the story of, um, of, the, of, of the course, or at least some aspects of it. And then, of course, we'll be turning to our SMEs, our subject matter experts, uh, so they can comment uh, on this story as well as participants in the course. Um, after that, we'll have... Uh, presentations from the participants and last but not least we'll be formally presenting these certificates to uh, participants who have successfully completed the course so um, to start the story it's actually quite remarkable 1248 applications received in 18 days a lot of interest uh, expressed in the course and a very selective course with less than 10% of applicants uh, selected by the World Health Organization. To give you a sense of what participants actually did and how you know, so we, 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 um, they did it, um, you can see here the, the course schedule, actually a, a, a six-week course, but with two weeks of sort of prep, uh, preparation, onboarding, and orientation uh, with successive weekly assignments and a main course deliverable. And it is actually this main course deliverable that that participants will be presenting today uh, before we go to the uh, awards of these certificates. So you'll get a sense of what participants, learners actually did and produced in order to learn uh, through this uh, through this course. Um, 66 um, learners submitted action plans. And this is remarkable. Peer review is a is a kind of core process um, in this in this learning journey. And altogether, these participants uh, performed 829 peer reviews. So 829 occasions upon which they both gave and received feedback, having to reflect, to think, to analyze how to actually share back with their colleagues something that colleagues could then help to, you know, that could help colleagues to improve uh, their work. And that's really a core to the learning process and to the uh, uh, metacognitive aspects of this uh, course. Now, uh, 62 so, you know, a little bit, certainly more than half of uh, participants met all of the certification requirements. And it is at the end of this ceremony that we will be indeed um, awarding these certificates. Now, some additional sort of perspective on, you know, so comparing the um, set, the group that started the course versus those who have now completed it. You can see that there is a slightly higher proportion of uh, women when it comes to the countries. Now, this may be a sensitive issue, but we want to be um, open and transparent uh, about this. You can see that 47 countries, uh, you know, so participants from 47 different countries uh, started. You can see the list here with, in parentheses, the numbers uh, from each country. And you can see in terms of the completers, uh, we have 33 countries that had participants uh, successfully complete the, uh, uh, the course. Uh, next is the uh, area of work and discipline. And you can see that initially 62% uh, um, said they performed radiological imaging procedures. And uh, by the end of the course, that percentage has, had gone up uh, slightly. Um, last sort of piece of information to give you a sense of what actually changed uh, throughout the course in terms of who the participants were. Um, here you can see that actually in terms of the mix, you know, the, uh, uh, the people with more or less experience that were not necessarily you know, so disfavored uh, by the process uh, of the course. So here is where I now want to um, turn back to our subject matter experts and ask um, if um, one or more of you would like to comment um, on you know, so this brief retelling of uh, the story and a few of the data points in relation to the course. Well, maybe I can uh, start and just simply say I, I hope that, um, first of all, those numbers are incredible. Um, and um, obviously, uh, there's a great 
deal of interest um, in this topic of communication radiation protection. Um, what I, I think we all hope, um, um, especially Maria and Joanna, is that there's an amplific amplification of what you do. That is, you are now the teacher and take this information and work with your project and continue to um, have that permeate your practice, your region, uh, et cetera. And that's, that's the whole idea of something like this is it starts with the group and then that group uh, as students initially become teachers. And that's really the way that these kinds of efforts um, take a uh, strong hold. So um, uh, incredible start with the interest and the numbers were uh, impressive. The representation from so many um, uh, areas of the world is, is incredible. Uh, but you all take this again as a, uh, as a commitment to, to go on and um, uh, 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 continue to spread that, uh, the necessity and the kinds of tools you've developed uh, throughout your practices, your hospital, your region. Thank you, Don, Maria, or, or make, Joanna. Yes, please go ahead. Sorry, maybe, maybe one thing to add, uh, what Don said, which I completely agree with it. When Reda presents the data, we can all see the big variety of us in the group. So you have radiologists and radiographers and researchers and pediatricians and everyone who is involved in patient's care. And it doesn't matter if you are the head of department or you are a very junior radiographer, you all have a part to play in the process. And this is something beautiful that everyone can be involved and it should be involved, anyone who is involved in patient care. So it's, it's great to have everyone across different speciality at the levels of your career. Thank you, Joanna. Maria? Well, uh, I cannot... Um much more, but uh, based on the numbers, I already knew, but uh, you reminded us uh, that we selected, uh, let's say, less than 10%. And I always wonder, and we always talk about all the others who applied. And it happened to me this week that uh, I attended a, a congress in one country, and virtually, and uh, one of the speakers who presented uh, an amazing project on, on protection and radiation protection, she said uh, that she identified the need to improve um, uh, radiation risk communication, that she had applied to a pilot that WHO organized, that she was not selected, and that she was looking forward to have the opportunity. So for me, it was really, uh, really special, that uh, interaction, because I thought, we have here people so motivated, this 100 and then those who completed the projects. And we also have in the other area, a lot of people also motivated who couldn't do this training. And uh, as, as you said, Don, uh, you now have uh, also, we all have the responsibility of continuing, multiplying, finding ways to make this as a living network, we will discuss this later. But finding this person yesterday for me was more motivated. We have more people around close to us that they also want to do uh, as you did so well. That's my experience from yesterday. All right, thank you very much, uh, Maria. We now want to uh, talk about and really reflect upon your learning experience as participants and as uh, subject matter experts uh, in the course. Uh, so there was uh, a post-course question there that I, it may still be distributed. Um, we have 39 responses uh, so far, so it's not complete, but nevertheless, uh, it contains also some interesting uh, lessons and insights. First of all, of those who responded, you can see there's a, a fairly high level of satisfaction uh, in the course. Uh, there's little doubt about that. Second is that almost everyone um, would recommend this course to their colleagues. Uh, so this is this does not happen in every course every time. So this is quite remarkable. And then uh, Min Jia, who really facilitated uh, this course uh, over the course of many, many weeks, uh, selected these quotes uh, to uh, tell some of the stories and some of the insights and takeaways that uh, participants shared. So this one, this course for me is a time to learn how to do things better. Learning from peers has been wonderful. 
an exchange of experience and ideas, even problems between different specialities from different cultures is really invaluable. In fact, I am not feeling alone anymore in this battle. It's good to hear that globally we all share the same struggle and working ethics and environments. I will definitely use some of the tips I got from my peers. The value again just keeps coming back of peers learning from each other with each other with guides trusted guides on their side i'm so impressed by the motivational power of peer learning said this uh, participant in the feedback i learned a lot about how culture influences perception of radiation effect if we think our center does not have enough or the right resources there's some places that are far worse how others have to cope with constraints and i will always be an ambassador for this cause then we, people, participants, learners in this course developed an action plan. And one remarkable thing is that in the post-course uh, um, questionnaires, we always ask, um, you know, what are you going to do with you know, what you gained, what you developed in the course? And actually, you can see there's only there are two people who haven't yet started to implement or apply what they learned. Everyone else, and there's actually already people who said that I've already done it. I'm already using uh, my new skills. I've already perhaps even implemented my uh, my plan. Remarkable uh, uh, results in this course. I have scheduled a weekly meeting of all referring doctors and pediatric imaging performers so as to re-emphasize the need to stick to pediatric imaging risk referral guidelines. Just some of the concrete effects, what people are doing with what they practiced and uh, reflected and shared and, and uh, received feedback and gave feedback. I have shared the information with my section manager and she or he has asked me to do informal indoor orientation to radiographers under my lead. I've done one-to-one -one interview with radiographers about the plan and now we're organizing a formal department meeting to deliberate the risk benefit communication project before application to hospital administration. So this is either while the course was happening or within a few days of it being completed. Um, this, these are the actions being taken by participants already. Um, so far, I have begun the distribution of the posters from WHO and Image Gently to our patients, members of the public, to create awareness in radiation benefits and risks in pediatric imaging. Also, I, uh, the course materials have been incorporated in our undergraduate curriculum to improve teaching in radiation benefit and risk communication. Um, my action plan... Um, started already in my institution. The next steps will be done as scheduled in the project by the end of August. The first course will be done and they will be regularly repeated with the hospital yearly. Um, there are three more and they are some, are, some of the quotes are quite long, but they're so profoundly interesting showing how action-oriented participants in, the, in this course have, uh, have been. I started the consultations with the relevant stakeholders. I'll be meeting the National Radiation Protection Authority chief scientist next week to discuss their input and contribution to the project. I'm also in the process of editing my posters, which will be used for the second action of the project. Engage medical students, health professional, Brazilian College of Radiology, to participate on educational website on about radiation risk benefits. And I'm planning to give a continuous medical education. I've talked to my supervisors who agreed to give me a chance to present my work to radiology directorate and finally through hospital-wide forum to reach uh, the, uh, uh, the stakeholders. So before we turn to the SMEs once again, I want to first uh, share, uh, ask you to uh, give a round of applause to, uh, you know, in response to some of these participants. Uh, feedback that is remarkable <laughs> from a uh, pedagogical perspective as well as uh, from an action perspective. What I'm going to try is just ask everyone to unmute. We haven't, this was actually practice or rehearsal uh, so that you can actually do some live. <laughs> and this is, of course. Um, <laughs> This is, of course, rehearsal for when we will be awarding these certificates. But um, you've heard some some quite compelling testimonials of how people, what people are already doing, um, just uh, following these uh, these courses. So I want to go back to now to our subject matter experts uh, for you know, to respond and comment uh, when you hear that learners are you know, taking actions like these. Uh, how does that? Yeah. What 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 would you like to say to them? Uh, and what is your message? 
Joanna? I'd just like to say that I'm have following Maria and Don that I'm the most impressed by the group, by the course, how hard you work during the course and how much you completed. And just to say you are a champions now and you will be taking this message and taking it to your hospitals. And it's incredible how you plan everything and how you have everything in progress and you are continuing this. And hopefully in your places, you will build the team around you and you will be working together and spreading in your country. But at the same time, stay in touch together to uh, support each other and help as much as you are doing it during this course. Great. Thank you, Joanna. And Maria, would you like to comment uh, these testimonials we just well, heard? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, what I felt while listening to the testimonies this week is, uh, is really strong uh, to hear that somebody has already incorporated in the curriculum of the training uh, the, the topics that we discuss here. This is really moving from from knowledge and training into action in at almost at the same time. This is really implementation. This is what we, this was our dream in a way, is to implement. When we prepare the book, and uh, probably Don, will, Don was with me when we started, I don't know, many years ago with other experts, uh, writing the book, and we always thought, but, but we need to support implementation, support implementation. These are two words that we repeat uh, in WHO always. We want to support implementation of guidelines. And this is a clear example of implementing learning uh, and uh, documents and tools. So you encourage us to continue producing tools, but also to continue doing this kind of activities because this is when the tools really reach the hands and also transform into actions. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, thank you very much indeed, uh, Maria uh, Perez and Joanna Cassia Brown. Um, now, um, it is time to turn. You have heard a kind of recap prepared by uh, my uh, dear colleague Minja about uh, your experience of the course, what you said about it. You've heard from these subject matter experts and it's now time uh, to turn to you, uh, participants in the course. Uh, this course was, is in fact, you know, falls under what we call not just action learning, but applied learning. So really, um, as Maria just said, you know, thinking about implementation every step of the way because that is what matters for most forms of practitioner-based learning. So I now want to turn to um, a number of participants who are in the room. We're going to hear a few of the many uh, participant presentations. I apologize in advance. Not everyone who wishes and is ready to present will be able to do so. The constraint of time um, is, is quite severe in this context. And we also are respectful of the fact that you have professional duties and obligations. Uh, so let's uh, start. I'm going to call on uh, Abel uh, Carrera. Carrera, sorry. Uh, Abel, uh, would you be able to unmute? We would love to hear. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I think I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Uh, loud and clear. All right. Okay. Right. Do you want me to share or do you just want me to explain the uh, action plan? Um, if you wish to share your screen, if that if that is helpful uh, for you, please do so. Again, we need a synthetic summary. Yes. Um, Three minutes would be would be awesome. Um, you know, if you need a couple more minutes, um, then that that is acceptable. Uh, we really want you to focus on the actions, on the situation, the challenge, the goal, and the action. So up to you if you'd like to share your screen. Okay, since it's a very short uh, space of time, then I'm just uh, explain without uh, sharing. Um, so my name is Abel Carrera, and I'm working as a lecturer at the University of Namibia and uh, I'm teaching in the radiography program. And uh, as part of the program, I also attend clinical uh, work at two state hospitals that are based in Windhoek. And I do uh, take part in imaging that include pediatric patients as well. Uh, so in my context, uh, we do have uh, CT scanners and uh, daily we scan uh, both adults and pediatric patients. And uh, I think about 20 to 30% of the patients we receive daily are pediatric patients. 
and uh, they're coming in with a range of uh, different uh, indications uh, different requests and um, in my, uh, my my focus of my problem is to do with the communication between the radiographers and the patients in terms of uh, risk uh, and benefits of the examination that will be requested. So there is uh, very little that is being done by the radiographers currently in that line, uh, apart from probably giving a bit of information on the procedure itself and what is expected of the patient, etc. The, there is a minimum participation in the risk benefit communication. Uh, most of the radiographers assume that uh, this has already been covered by the referring clinicians during the time the request was being made. Um, so my action plan is focused on trying to improve uh, the uh, in fact to, to increase participation in risk benefit communication uh, between uh, by radiographers or between radiographers and the patient and uh, as, as part of that action plan um, I intend to uh, uh, I intend to uh, do some CPD continuous professional development workshops as well as uh, produce some posters uh, that will also uh, be in line with the content that is covered in the CPD. So the workshop or seminar that I am planning to do is will be covering uh, doses that are um, uh, encountered in CT, uh, pediatric CT procedures, uh, the risks and the benefits of uh, the common procedures and as part of that workshop I'm going to work with the radiologists that are part of the department, I'm going to work with the senior radiographers who are working in the city and I'm also going to involve uh, the uh, chief radiation protection sign uh, officer from the uh, uh, radiation protection authority of Namibia and um, I've already started consultation with the uh, chief uh, radiation uh, officer and we've had a preliminary discussion of the project itself and what uh, their contribution is going to be in that project and I've also uh, had a meeting with the senior radiographers who are working in the city already and now we are in the process of just uh, polishing up uh, the action plan and also just uh, agreeing on the content that is going to be offered. And um, we, I will be approaching in a couple of weeks or so, I will be approaching also the Allied Health Practitioners Council, uh, um, the, the, yes, the Allied Health Professionals Council to get award the, our, uh, the, the, the seminar awarded continuous professional development uh, points, CPD points for the attendees of that workshop. It was very interesting because from my reviewers, I also got an idea that I, I can actually roll this out to include the referrers also by modifying uh, the, the approach a little bit. So I also in the near future intend to develop a secondary action plan that is going to target the, the referrers. And the second, secondary the seminar or workshop is where the posters are going to come in. They are also going to focus on radiation doses, uh, uh, risk benefits in, in, in pediatric city, as well as the process of conducting uh, the radiation risk dialogue. And this will serve as a kind of a permanent reminder to the radiographers on these two aspects. I think in summary, I would say that is uh, the action plan that I've developed as part of this project. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Abel uh, Carrera. Um, before we go to the uh, SMEs, I have one more uh, question for you about, in fact, your experience of the, uh, uh, of, of the course. Um, if you were to recommend uh, this course to a colleague, um, what would you tell them is special or unique about this course? I think for me, it is the, the peer learning. Uh, it, it is, I can say, my first course that is probably mainly based on peer, peer learning. And at first, I didn't know what to expect exactly, but as the course unfolds, I found it very interesting and very, very helpful to get feedback from peers. In fact, it makes you understand much more um, how others uh, look at the content that you, you, or you produce or how they reflect on what you intend to do. And it creates, I guess, this um, 
familiarity between yourself and the problem and the recipients that you, you want to solve the problem for. Um, I've talked about this course with my colleagues uh, where I work and in the departments and uh, it, it has really generated a lot of interest and I think in, in my reviews I always say that uh, we this course needs to roll out so that more people get involved and learn how to actually participate in radiation risk uh, communication. Thank you very much indeed. Let's uh, have a round of applause uh, for our first presenter. Abel Carrera, this is the uh, commencement event for the WHO Scholar Level 1 course on radiation risk communication to improve benefits risk dialogue in pediatric Im imaging. And just to explain before we go uh, to uh, our subject matter experts for, for comments or um, uh, follow-up questions perhaps, um, what you just heard from Abel Carrera is the action plan, a, a quick, a brief oral presentation of the action plan developed in the context of this course to actually apply what uh, he learned from this uh, WHO guidance document. Uh, now over to uh, Maria, uh, Joanna, and uh, if available, John, uh, Don. Uh, so I know some of you may have uh, your urgent duties uh, making you unavailable to, uh, to comment. Um, who would like to start? Uh, I don't know if Don is available. Maybe he wants to start. Uh, if but if not, you know, what I can what I can say is that it's really excellent to see this plan because it's really, uh, Abel, you, you address what was requested to do, an action plan on communication, very, very well planned in time, in the time frame and the goals, etc. But also I can see that it has been evolving because now you are thinking about moving beyond your target audience that was originally the radiographers, I understood you will move to referrers, that you will expand the workshop and the, and the plan. And even you are incorporating now those management and other things that go beyond communication. So just to say that this is like a trigger a action that will have impact in the quality of care probably in your, uh, in your service or department. So that is my point. I want to, to, to hear more from the participants, so I don't want to be... No. All, right. All right, Joanna, a quick comment from you then, perhaps? Yeah, I, I yeah. really like it, what, what, what Maria said and what you Abel did. You, you took it as a big project, and it's really important to include all of the stakeholders. So you included, you included the hospital management and radiologists, radiographers, and the re referral physicians, and this is when you will really, really achieve the success and make the difference. And make it it's sustainable. The, your idea of including it in, C, uh, in CPD schemes is brilliant because in the beginning very often people are getting excited about things that will come to once or twice but then if you incorporate it into the training curriculum or CPDs or the regular meetings then you will achieve a really really long-term success so well done thank you wonderful let's go now to our next uh, presenter and i do see uh, a number of you have volunteered to uh, to present i apologize in advance we're not going to be able to uh, hear presentations from everyone uh, our next presenter is uh, el bajir hamza uh, mansoor uh, el bajir are you able to unmute all right let me just uh, see if we can if you are prepared uh, to for to do a quick, a brief uh, oral summary of your action plan. All right, El Bajir is not responding, so let me see if uh, Esther uh, Adede is uh, ready. Uh, Esther, are you ready? Would you to do a short oral presentation? I'm asking you to unmute. Um, all right, let's now go to uh, Liliana uh, Barrera. Liliana. And if and if either um, uh, El Bajir or Esther, if you uh, just let me know if you are there, uh, if you are ready to present. All right. Okay. Um, th as they're not responding, I'm going to go to Eriko Maeda, uh, who's had uh, a hand up for a while. Uh, Eriko, uh, warm welcome to you. Are you ready to uh, give us a quick oral summary of your action plan? Yes. Uh, thank you very much for our opportunity to speak here. here. Uh, actually, in Japan, uh, we have a program uh, before uh, risk communi communication in uh, radiation, uh, radiation um, exposure 
because we have very negative um, impression of um, radiation uh, exposure throughout the company, uh, country because of our historical um, background of Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and recently in Fukushima. So many uh, Japanese people uh, think about uh, talking about radiation and exposure, it is taboo. So we have to start our communication from something negative. Um, that is, is very different from may, may, many of you, I think, yeah, who, who has, uh, who, who, whose country has um, neutral or positive uh, images to medical um, radi radiation uh, ex exposure or ex uh, uh, testing. So um, our um, goal, finally, <laughs> maybe to um, um, el eliminate our very negative um, impression of radiation exposure or very troublesome uh, or uh, issue to uh, discuss about um, ex radiation exposure in, in medicine to uh, uh, the peop uh, people who are um, up, 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 uh, visiting uh, um, the hospitals. So uh, radiologists and radiation uh, uh, and radiographers uh, dislike communicating with uh, the mm -hmm. with the patients about radiation protection, uh, radiation ex uh, exposure, or uh, because many uh, of them dislike communicating about radiation um, exposure, and uh, many dislike um, how as how uh, or some 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 people are. Um, very um, agitated about radiation exposure and uh, work like uh, um, um, activists. <laughs> so our um, we are um, we have to work um, first to, um, among medical professionals, especially around radiological radiologists and radiographers. To talk about start start talking about radiation exposure in a first in a scientific manner, then we have to bring bring step by step to communication because communication is much difficult than uh, uh, talking something neutral yeah, uh, in uh, scientific um, um, issue. So our plan first is to um, eliminate taboo among radiologists and radiographers to talk within themselves to talk about radiation exposure. So I uh, I'm just, uh, actually making many um, textbooks and um, many webinars and many materials for radiologists to uh, study about radiation exposure. Um, I, I, I continue this uh, activity, but my um, first step is to um, share the feeling that talking about radiation exposure is not taboo. <laughs> so uh, it, it's uh, always, uh, only, almost eliminated in my uh, uh, hospital, but to um, make this um, activity brought into the country. I have to make friends, more friends, more um, friends within my um, hospital to talk about um, radiation exposure and communication. So I I will start a uh, um, study study course with. Um, Radi uh, um, medical students and uh, radiology residents and very young uh, radio uh, radiographers to read the um, WHO guidance and so page by step, page, and it's important to make it 
make some long time to at least one month, one year to uh, uh, make the atmosphere of that uh, radiation exposure is not taboo. So with uh, our um, colleagues being uh, 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 eliminated taboo, I will start uh, working with uh, other members of uh, Japanese radiologists and radio radio um, radiographers about communication. So it, it may have much longer time compared to the member of this um, radiation <laughs> member of this course, but um, I will um, lead this. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Eriko, Eriko Maeda, for this uh, uh, for this uh, presentation. So, um, and for sharing your your plan in an international course with uh, people from uh, all over the world. Um, let's go next to, um, and we'll have a big round of applause. Uh, we are going to have at least one more presentation. So, I'm going to ask uh, Armani. Uh, Reda, and there is no uh, preference on the basis of any resemblance between my <laughs> my uh, name yes. and uh, <laughs> and her last <laughs> name. Uh, a warm welcome uh, to you. Um, so again, <laughs> if if you can, please try Thank to be you. concise. Again, we want you to focus on the situation, the challenge, the goal, okay. the action, and really give us a s quick oral summary. Don't forget to introduce yourself, though. Uh, over to you. Okay, okay. Um, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Uh, Okay, okay. I'm uh, Amani, consultant neonatology, neonatal unit, maternity hospital, University College Hospital, Cairo, Egypt, and it's a tertiary neonatal unit, uh, well equipped, and of course we have a portable X-ray and ultrasound machines. Uh, we have. Uh, access to other imaging modalities in the radiology department. Uh, point of care ultrasound is available two four seven in our unit and is performed by a team of neonatologists. We also refer our uh, patients for other imaging modalities, CT, country studies, MRI, whenever needed. We are well confronted with different problems over the last decade. Uh, first is clinicians didn't consider the radiation risk in this vulnerable age group when ordering X-ray or CT or other studies, um, despite they are well aware of these risks and available guidelines in our department. And second, there isn't enough awareness about radiation risk among uh, patients' families. In fact, they, uh, they are convinced that the more expensive the imaging modality is, the better for their baby. And even they don't mind even willing and asking to repeat the CT and X-ray to be satisfied. Third, clinicians are um, assigned too many patients, which hinders patient-clinician um, relationship. And my goals uh, are classified into three groups. And the first group is uh, um, first to spread the culture of uh, ultrasound among neonatologists and encourage um, um, encourage neonatologists to uh, consider ultrasound before ordering x-ray or CT, given it's um, a non-invasive, uh, non-ionizing modality. And uh, my actions for this goal is weekly meeting with a NICU senior staff uh, who are inclined to, to do an X-ray or CT because they are usually did this uh, and they are not uh, acknowledged with the uh, ultrasound and ultrasound pictures. So we did a weekly meeting with them to discuss new cases showing how accurate the ultrasound can be in the clinical scenario. And then we have a monthly meeting with the pediatric surgeons and pediatric uh, neurosurgeon who always um, order CT for the babies to discuss cases clinically and radiological, show the, showing them how the ultrasound is safe and you can use it for diagnosis and follow up instead of doing CT and even the order CT for follow up, which is uh, a very uh, weird. Uh, um, and and uh, then uh, how to implement ultrasound and radiation safety guidelines such as LR and image gently. Uh, also, we will propose um, that uh, residents of pediatric surgery and neurosurgery uh, 
uh, spend two months in our uh, department, NICU, in addition, attend the neonatal uh, ultrasound course to ensure that we are reading the same page. It's a direct, effective uh, communication way. And um, the second group of goals are um, nationwide awareness and implementing of neonatal ultrasound in Egypt. Um, and we propose uh, in Einstein's University the following action, ultrasound training program in our uh, department for our residents, um, and then neonatal ultrasound course for those working at other hospitals, and um, and um, so including lectures about radiation risk and benefit as well as indication and application of ultrasound in AQ and when to order city actually we need the city but when we need the city imaging is very important and secondly and we are going to start this after the pandemic we are going to travel to other regions in the country to teach neonatal ultrasound hands-on we also believe in helping other hospitals to initiate their programs third we are going to start this year the medical student uh, ultrasound training course hands-on will be held in our unit to help them recognize the broad scope of focused ultrasound for clinician and highlight its importance uh, before they are uh, they are going to be during a very fully booked in the residencies, so we are going to start early during their uh, medical um, uh, year. And um, then the third group of goals are to minimize the radiation those to both units and personal uh, personnel in the unit while maintaining diagnostic image quality and um, let me see yes this is the third group is first by encourage medical personnel to use their protective shields um, ongoing follow-up and other thing to improve safety of plain x-ray by um, proper handling, proper uh, collimation, proper positioning to avoid repetition and avoid unjustified filming and repeat, repeated filming. Uh, as long as um, once the baby sets or so the order X-ray, I'm trying to stop this attitude. Uh, so we can decrease the number of X-rays for new needs, especially preterm ones. And of course, follow up to ensure compliance is very important. Ordering CT, uh, ordering CT should be, and it is in our uh, unit, a consultant decision so we can limit unneeded CT. Uh, MRI, raising, uh, highlighting the importance of indication of MRI as a safe imaging modality. Our plan to have an MRI compatible incubator so we can uh, have a good monitoring, minimal handling uh, during the procedure itself. Armani, uh, I'm going to have to ask finally, you to conclude, please. Uh, please conclude. Okay, yep. this is uh, a conclusion. Fine. Yes, uh, to encourage uh, parents to discuss with uh, doctors. Um, uh, we have a cozy um, uh, room for this and I hope that maybe next year I can give you feedback about this project and I invite you all to come to Egypt to our uh, university and Shams University Hospital to give this course in person. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much indeed. Let's have applause for all of our participants as well as the uh, subject ma matter experts uh, who were your guides on the side. Uh, rather than the uh, sages on the stage um, throughout this uh, this course. Now, um, when we reached uh, the end of this course, um, we asked you a very simple question, and it is the following. Now that the course is finished, are you interested in joining others, other scholars, uh, to work together to achieve impact? As you can see, 95% of you, uh, those who have responded so far, um, have actually responded yes. And we know some of you, we've already heard some of the testimonials. Many of you are already implementing and working, thinking through how you're actually going to make a difference uh, with respect to this uh, issue of radiation risk communication to improve benefit risk dialogue in pediatric imaging. So um, I'm going to... Um, ask 
Charlotte now to introduce uh, the pledge. And this has been developed by um, Dr. Maria del Rosario Perez, Dr. Donald Frush, Dr. Joanna Casnier Brown, really to try to synthesize what does it mean to take action to want to achieve impact. Uh, so uh, let me pull this up on the uh, uh, main, main screen. Uh, let me see if I can. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to turn now to Charlotte Embu from the from the foundation uh, to uh, read this pledge for us before we go to the uh, um, awards of the certificates. Uh, Charlotte. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Reda. Uh, the scholar pledge to improve benefit benefit risk dialogue in pediatric imaging. I am committed to work for a world where every patient everywhere gets the greatest possible benefit from pediatric imaging at the lowest possible risk. Informed, engaging, and sensitive radiation benefit risk dialogue is a duty for all healthcare professionals. We need to ensure that care is delivered in an equal and reciprocal relationship between professionals, patients, and their families in a way that information decision-making and service delivery become shared. As a scholar, I hereby play, solemnly pledge to provide communication for both radiation risks and benefits of pediatric imaging procedures in a balanced way in my practice. Foster engagement of patients and families in radiation, radiation benefit risk discussions for informed decision-making to provide the best possible patient-centered care and share resources and promote awareness among healthcare professionals to improve radiation benefit risk dialogue throughout the pediatric patient's care pathway. I make this pledge for the health of patients and families in my country and everywhere. Thank you very much, uh, Reda, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. This pledge uh, has been crafted by these subject matter experts who've listened to you, who've supported you throughout the course. As you think about the action plan you developed in this course, and right before we go to the uh, uh, presentation of these certificates, reflect on whether you recognize yourself and your commitment in the pledge. This, in addition to the technical work that you did, uh, in addition to the you know, uh, getting gaining new knowledge about risk uh, communication, uh, there's also a moral dimension to the commitment that uh, we'd like you to reflect on and uh, think about as you think about what are you going to do now that this course is uh, uh, is finished. Now. Uh, the course is finished. We call this a commencement because we want you to focus. We want to convey that you know, the, the point is what are you going to do with the uh, knowledge uh, you gain. So I'm going to ask, I believe, unfortunately, uh, Don Frush has been called away by his duties, but I'm going to ask uh, Maria and uh, Joanna to um, now present the certificates. So we will have, I'm going to put the first one up on the screen. We'll start with uh, Maria. You should be able to see uh, the uh, the name of the person. Uh, I'm just going to ask you to read uh, the name and then we'll switch to uh, to the to the to uh, our other presenter uh, to read the next name. So let me now bring up the uh, uh, first uh, certificate on uh, screen. Um, okay. Okay, I'm going to start reading and then you, Joanna, read the following. Uh, so the, the certificate is for Abir Magawi Abd El Hamed Mohammed. Congratulations. Right. And for the first few, we'll have a round of applause after each one. Right. Here we go. Um, all right, uh, Joanna. So the next certificate is for Abel Carrera. Thank you very much. <laughs> the next one to Alexandros Samartsis. Congratulations. And the next one is for the Altino Kuncha. Now the certificate for Amani Reda Mustafa El Bahiti. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah. And the next one, I hope that I will pronounce in the nice well for Anna Chiao. Next one for Andrea Apau. Congratulations. 
And the next certificate is for Ariani Vidodo. Congratulations. Thank you. Now for Asif Gielani. Congratulations, Asif. And the next one, Caroline Kinotti. Well done. Congratulations. Now, Caroline Kletetzel Bandera, congratulations. And the next certificate is for Carrie Sheffer. Thank you for attending and congratulations. Now, for Chinika Ag Agarwal, congratulations. And the certificate and the big congratulation to Hizoba Apollo. Now for Damaseni Habumakubau. Congratulations. And Daniel Del Manarsh, congratulations. Now for David Karam. Congratulations, David. And the next certificate is for Albagir Hamza Mansour. Congratulations. Next one for Eriko Maeda. Congratulations, Eriko. And the big congratulations and certificate to Esther under there. Now for Faratiana Vero Rasafindra Haribelo. Congratulations. Good morning. Teach. Hello. And the next congratulation is for Felister Karotich Kipkemoi. Congratulations. Now for Felister Kipkemoi. Similar name. <laughs> yeah. And Janice Pascal Ferrer Iglesias. Big congratulations. Now for George Simwawa. Zimbabwe, congratulations. And Guru Taganyak Aron, congratulations. Now for Idris Garba, congratulations, Idris. And Ilsa Maria Castro, congratulations. For Ioannis Delakis, congratulations. Next certificate and a big congratulations to Isaac Mouvanguzi. Uh, congratulations, Janet Obayomi. And Jonathan Louis Portelli. Congratulations. To Jose Silva. Congratulations, Jose. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> And Justus Vasigire, congratulations. For Carla Spindola, congratulations, Carla. And Lara Abdelmulnini Idris, big congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. For Liliana Oliveira Barreira Lynch, congratulations. And certificate and the congratulations to Magesa Kalebo. Congratulations to Marco Costa. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations to Maria Fernanda Monzon. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations to Maria Francisca. Thank you so much. And Maria Masango. Congratulations. Thank you. For Mariela Silvina Agolti. Felicitaciones. Congratulations. <laughs> and Monica Oliviera Bernardo. Congratulations. Thank you. 
to Musa Mohammed Saif Al Hudaifi. Congratulations. Thank you. Nazik Madani, well done and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. For uh, Nitika Gupta, congratulations. And Nurul Eshohani Samad Fatimi, congratulations. For Olumide Alao, congratulations. Congratulations and certificate to Omar Israel Mata Garcia. Bravo. Uh, congratulations to Patricia Eni Owo. And congratulations to Peace Amar Gabulam. Congratulations. Congratulations also for Philomena A.P. Rajandaram. Thank you. And the congratulations to Raisa Maria Joseph Bakmano. And congratulations for Rainel Gordon. Bravo. <laughs> Certificate and congratulations to Rifat Malik. Thank you. Congratulations to Saika Abdullah. Bravo. And to Sanjin Barkovic. Congratulations. Congratulations to Siona Jung. And congratulations to Stephen Malcoma. Congratulations to Tadese Gondimu Goldies. Gold and the certificate Bravo. and congratulations to Takalani Bandela. Thank you. Congratulations to Tatiana Fasecas. And to Truman Gonzalo. Congratulations. Good. Congratulations to Vanessa Esmeralda Vélez Moro Diaz. Thank you. Bravo. And congratulations to Vladimir Bahun. A congratulations to Saleha Abd Manaf. Thank you. Bravo. All right, congratulations to all. We have some uh, messages coming in from colleagues, perhaps family members. Um, so we have. Melvina John, who says congratulations, uh, Janice, and um, let's see, we, yeah, that's, um, as well as um, a message from Raiko, who says, uh, okay, another congratulations for Janice uh, Pascal Ferrer Iglesias. Um, Stacy says, congrats, Jen. Okay, and Melvina, all right, uh, wonderful uh, to see at least one participant who had uh, colleagues or. Um, uh, friends or family members uh, together for this uh, for this event. Um, that is uh, it uh, for today. But as we said, it is the commencement. I am going to um, ask everyone to unmute so that uh, you've already heard quite a bit of applause. But let's see if uh, this group coming together and let me see if we can come together. There's one last thing we need to do. All right, and that is the family photo. We look forward to continue. We will take actions to continue. Please, I will take a picture. I will take a picture of this beautiful, uh, including the new member. Round of applause before we go. 